Hi everybody, I'm Valérie and uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Nodeums. I'm very pleased today to explain you the, the capabilities of uh, Nodeum, our data storage management platforms and uh, show how it's easy to use and uh, do a quick tour about the, the capability the, the, the softwares provide in um, organizing and managing the the data from a primary storage perspective to secondary storage tiers. Um, important to understand that the concept behind Nodeum is to reduce the cost of your primary storage in, in removing and moving the data that are less used and place it on a common way and an easy way on a secondary storage tiers. Let's start with the platform. And here you can see that you have, it's a web modern system. On the right you have the capability to sign in inside the platform. Here this the, the Google-like search systems give the capability to search after some keyword inside the global catalog of Nodeum. And Nodeum has a capability to catalog any contents which are sitting on primary storage or secondary storage. And we provide an indexation engine then you can use some keyword system, but as well, we can go more granular in going to the metadata side, and you can even customize, you see, the data uh, by adding your own business metadata as well inside the solutions to facilitate the, move, the, the organization of your content. And you have as well the capability uh, to search after data location from a share a perspective or from a tab perspective, a cloud and a NAS perspective. You can as well decide to search across all the data which are stored. And you can see here that it's very fast to search after the content which are available uh, inside the platform. You can see, take this example, we can see the path of the files, we can see whether the file is located and how it can be easy to reach it. Okay, I can as well go through as mentioned per locations and say okay have a look inside a specific cloud bucket okay take for example this one and i will search after this one is completely empty and you have no file in okay now this you have a global and a quick overview of the catalog uh, uh, systems okay let's go more in the detail uh, i will log with an administrator's account in order to see the difference uh, information and the different panels an administrator can see and how we can start to organize, you see, the, the storage uh, management. Um, then this, uh, this dashboard is organized by, uh, let's say, a menu of six items here on the left and you have some uh, main information in, in these main panels. Uh, on the dashboard side, you have an overview of the different, um, different widgets with different uh, reports in regards to the storage usage in the in the platforms on the secondary storage but as well on the organization of the file structures and have some metrics that can be very useful for your management uh, uh, staff and in understanding how many files are stored per extension and per different type of classification. You have the storage trend analysis. I will go through later on but this uh, storage trend analysis provide the capability uh, to uh, go deep dive in getting report of the usage of the different type of data per locations. Then you can very facilitate the overview of if the data is stored on a certain level of storage and combine this information with an information knowing, okay, is this data has been used by who, when, and at which time on which frequency. The ecosystem management is the herd of the platform and the herd of the platform means that you can uh, organize on an automated way the movement of your data and inside the ecosystem management that you organize this, uh, this type of movement. The data containers are the definition of the volumes which are available on the platform. Um, you have to understand that Nodium is a solution to provide movement across storage, but you can as well present behind a virtual file system and behind an NFS or uh, SMB protocol or even more behind an S3 bucket, the content which are 
let's say, store on the different tier of storage. Afterward, you have the storage configuration where you can see all the connection of the storage which are linked as a secondary storage to Nodium. And last but not least, you have inside the systems uh, menu all the detail in regards to the, uh, to the platform itself and in regards to the, to the appliance. Okay. Let's start perhaps by this one, the storage configuration, going into the, the storage configuration. You can see here the different type of classification of secondary storage that Nodiums can manage. Starting by the lowest, uh, value, uh, lowest storage tier, you have the tape library. It's important to understand that Nodium manage natively any type of fiber channel or SAS tape library and this without any third party application, which provide an, easy of, an ease of use and of course a reduce of the cost as you doesn't have to use another third party application for managing the, 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 the tapes library. Uh, Nodiums provide as well the connections to NAS. Then we have the capability to attach and to map any type of um, NAS storage has a secondary storage layers. Afterwards, we have the view of the, let's say, of the of the cloud connections. Cloud can be can mean a private cloud that are that are accessible through an S3 on a Swift protocols which are on prem, but as well as public cloud uh, platforms uh, such as uh, Amazon S3 or even. Uh, Azure or Google Cloud Platform, but as well another one such as Wasabi, which is uh, start to be well known on the market as well. Then, for doing that, it's super easy to do. You can just use the name of how you how you define the cloud uh, platforms inside uh, Nodeums. You select the pro the providers you want to you want to 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 use. And you can see that we can support uh, different type of, of, uh, of S3 platforms, but as well on object storage uh, systems uh, inside uh, Nodium. And afterwards, you provide region access key and secret key. Okay, then this has to be clear now that we can connect different type of class of storage. And how is the um, secret source or the magic behind Nodium is that we can abstract all the type of storage behind a pool, which a pool is a group of a different type of storage, and we map and we present all these this different type of storage behind a unique way to present the access of the data, which are the pool. And you can see here in this panel the different pools we have. We have pool of tabs, we have a pool of cloud, and we have the pool of NAS as well. And how to make it uh, done? A pool, you can select plus, you name your pool. Let's say demo pool. You can put a comment, you can put a type, which is important as the pool of storage can be assigned to a specific uh, policies uh, where we can't determine the usage we will do with a pool because we want to avoid having different type of workflows, applying data movement on the wrong type of volume of storage. Then we can dedicate, for example, a bucket, a cloud S3 bucket for a specific workflows. Let's say take I want to manage an archiving of data and keep the data reachable for the end users. Or you can decide that you will use a set of tabs, for example, for doing an offline archive which will provide the capability to move the content on these selected tabs, but we will lock completely uh, the content for an end user's perspective. Okay, then you can see how we can go deeper inside this type of classifications. And I can just have to select the type of uh, pools I want to use. I push the, I can just now afterwards use the, the target and I can just save it. And you can see here that I have created an access, a pool of data on a, on a, on a NAS uh, storage. Of course, you can see that we can easily uh, edit or modify 
the, the bucket, let's take this one, it's a Claudian bucket uh, connected on a private uh, hyper, uh, hyper store uh, which is sitting uh, on-prem, all right? For Wasabi as well, I can edit it and you can see that it's a bucket that is defined on Wasabi uh, platforms. Okay, then this is perfectly understood. Uh, now let's go to a step higher. Then remember, we said target is to move contents which are less used from a primary storage. We move it to secondary storage tier. Okay, then let's start to define the links we have to build to um, between the primary storage and the secondary storage. And we can do this inside the data containers view. And data containers view has two uh, has um, can do, we can do two things inside the data container. The first thing is to provide the capability to do such kind of connections. It's one thing. The second thing is the capability to provide an NFS or an SMB um, view or of the data which are available in the secondary storage tier. And in one condition, and the condition is to have implemented an active archive movement, which can completely make sense, as we doesn't want to provide a, a, a direct accessibility or, or, of data that are stored, let's say, on a secure way. As I explained, we have different type of workflows. We can say, I want to manage on the secondary storage, an active archive workflow. We can do as well on the offline archive. We can do as well on migration. And per workflow, we can determine the policies we want to apply. But of course, we can, for an active archive, we can present the data, which are stored a little bit on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, let's say, on a, on a tabs, on a cloud, or even on a NAS. We can present this in a complete virtual way for an end users behind an NFS on SMB protocols. Then to do that, here is just a fact to create a network share. I will create a network share, which is Nebo demo. We can use as well some extra advanced settings in managing uh, caching resources allocation, managing quota, such kind of this. But this uh, can be completely customized per network share folders. Then here I have created let's say, uh, a demo uh, network share folders. All right, done. You can see here that for my demo network share folder, I can edit it, delete it, or I can even more change the privilege which is on. Then here I have a couple of users defined, and I can say, all right, my admin account have read-write access on the folders. Apply it. All right. Um, now, I will go later on on the user's privilege and how we can build uh, the security layers. But before that, uh, I will go through the primary storage. Primary storage are the links that are built between a primary storage system and all the secondary storage which are managed by Nodeums. And for doing this, it's easy. Click on, on the primary storage buttons. You select the mount point you want to uh, to define and you, you select a generic name, you select the, the remote target. After what you choose the protocols, SIFs, NFS, or even we can support Stornext for moving data from a Stornext file system to uh, a cloud, to a tab, to, a, to another type of NAS. We have the capability to use some such kind of options and you apply it. Okay. Then doing this, uh, you can directly see, this is an example, user mount names. This is an example, you can see NFS01, the strings and the type and it's done. Okay, then we have prepared this type of connection. Okay, let's go to the user's privilege menu. Here are my local users, which are defined. You can define as well groups, and you can as well use authentication services. Okay, here it's set as uh, notification services local, but you can as well connect to your Active Directory or to your LDAP. Okay, it's up to you. 
and you can manage a global, uh, a global mappings as well for uh, facilitating the management of the users and groups. All right, uh, data content is done. Then now I will cover, you will see here the, 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 the ecosystem management. And in the ecosystem management is, uh, in the overview, you can see the different tasks which are running right now, which are scheduled for the futures, and which, is, uh, which has been done in the past. Here you can see in the running task that you have a task that are right for now uh, running. And uh, you have some details about the task. You see here the speed. You can click on it and you will see some, uh, some details uh, about the task. Start it, the type, the processes side, the files. And, and you can as well see a complete uh, logs of what's happened. And it's very super clear how to make it down, you see, and how we can uh, measure the, uh, the movement uh, and the progress of the task. You can pause it, stop it, of course, as well. And here you have the history, okay? I will create a new one to show you how it works. And is here you can say demo move one, five days, okay? And here you can select the type. Do, do I want to have an active archive? Do I want an offline archive? Or just as well go to the data exchange as you can, where you can uh, manage movement uh, uh, between uh, content. Um, active archive, okay, let's do it. I want to do a move and I will select uh, as a source then every data which are stored on my demo uh, network share folders. I would like to, I will select all my files, I would like to move it to a cloud and to my Wasabi, okay, for example, or even to this, uh, this uh, cloud pools. I can select as well a NAS or I can select a, a, a TEPS, okay. Let's take the, the, the cloud pool and use now the filtering and is how the, the filtering is where you can define Let's say that the files that hasn't been accessed more than five days, after more than five days, that you doesn't have any access more than five days, now you want to move it to your object storage based, okay? And the schedule will be, I will run it automatically, okay? Here you have some various options. I save it, done. Then you can decide now that every files which are dropped inside the network share folders demo will be moved to an object storage connected to on a complete transparent way and automatically after five days. Doesn't mean that the files will be removed out of the share folder. It will be still seen in the share folders we define, but the file will move it, will be moved to the object storage systems. Then afterward, you can start to do another one, 10 days, NAS, let's say uh, uh, tabs, and here, active, active archive, a move again, I select my demo network share folders, I select it, add destination, and this time I will use a pool of tabs, next, my filters will be last access more than 10 days. Here we go. And this will be automatic. Save. This second rules will move all the data of which are not accessible after 10 days, which will be stored on my object storage. It will be moved automatically to a tabs. Here we go. In progress. Now start the rules will start. Analyze the data that has to be processed and is done as I doesn't have any data for now in my demo network share folders. Okay, then you can see how it's very super easy to do, how it's super easy to start to manage the movement. Okay, now have a look to the, to the network share folders and I will go through that, connect to,
we go. Admin password. You choose your admin account and the selected password. Go. Connect. And I will select my demo network share folders. Okay. Now I can say I will take a file, take this video, and I copy it inside, you see, the DM in the network share folders demo I built. Okay. Copy. And you can see here the files license application.mp4. Coming back to the platforms here. I will modify my rules, okay, here, yeah. and I will remove for the demo the criteria of my filters. And I will remove the filters of five days, meaning that all the data here, data, you see, inside my demo share folders will be moved to, you see, to, to my uh, object storage, okay. Then I will run it. Is done. And you can see here that I move my content to the connected uh, object storage systems. Okay, and you can see here, let's show me the files. Okay, let's move this, all these files and my license application. And you can see here in the verbose that has been done. Does it mean that the file disappeared? Has said the file is still there. You can see here, it doesn't disappear. The file is still reachable inside my network share folders. If I go back here and I say license, anyway, here we go. And you see now that it's on the bucket defined here. And you can see that the file has been moved and removed out of uh, my caching system and out of all of my content. And now it's been moved directly to the, the object storage system. And this can be done automatically on any kind of storage. Now let's go on the trans analysis and trail global overview, then you have nice widgets about the, the, the movement and uh, the usage of the data. And we have the capability has said to provide, you see metrics and report about the usage of the top 10 uh, network share directories, where the data, uh, if the data has been accessed and per intervals and understanding when the data are accessible per different users and give you the, to each uh, IT storage architect or IT system administrators the reports uh, to, um, to organize on the best way uh, the placement of the data. Okay? And we have different type of, of, uh, of reports uh, regarding the, the usage of the systems. All right. The last things I, uh, didn't, uh, I didn't go through are the, the metadata side. As we can define the metadata. Here, for example, uh, we can say classifications and I can use, uh, for example, a, a checkbox uh, button and I can say video, for example, I can say, yeah, video, I can say image, I can say sounds. Here I created a metadata which is classification and with three different types of entries, video, image, and sound. Okay, save. And now you can see that I have defined, defined this inside the DM. And the ID is to go back here to my catalogs and use this for here for classifying my data. I can say, oh, this is a video. I apply it. Classifications, video. Thank you. Now I would like to use my metadata search and use give me everything, which is video everything which is video. Then you can see directly how it's easy and fast to search after millions of files. Quickly, just by tagging now your content and using Nodeums to facilitating the movement of the data. Go back to the administration. Uh, you, we have covered the data uh, trends analysis as well. And we have do a two of the different capability of the product. And in summary, in this demonstration, I showed how it was easy 
to move a data from primary storage to a secondary storage, use different type of workflows engine to set permission and policies to the, um, to the workflows you want, and facilitating the access on an object storage on a tab, on a NAS, and make it easy and unified for any type of access and movement. And as well, I have showed how it's now easy to reduce the storage TCO of a primary storage in moving the selected data to the right destination. And that searching and finding back, back the data is very easy. I want to thank you very much. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach us. And my contact details are here below. Call me and we can discuss about your challenges. Thank you so much.